Hello there. This is uh, Sandy New Bigging from a rather chilly <laughs> uh, Spanish mountain. Um, I'm tuning in and calling in today from my home in Spain, uh, where the weather has changed. It's definitely October. It's definitely uh, Halloween today. So happy Halloween. And uh, so it's Sandy here tuning in uh, from my home in Spain. And I want to take you through today 13. Ooh. <laughs> 13 scary but true uh, spiritual truths that are not for the faint-hearted. Um, I'm really uh, excited about sharing these with you today. Um, I thought I'd go for like a scary uh, uh, theme, uh, seeing as uh, we're broadcasting this on Halloween. Happy Halloween to all the viewers out there. Thank you for joining me. Hello, uh, Lisa from Florida. I'm imagining it's probably a little bit warmer where you are. Although I'm in Spain, I live up a mountain and it's a bit chilly, so I apologize if, if you think I look a bit scruffy with my warm jacket on, but it's, uh, it's nice to be warm. So, um, yes, I wanted to talk to you today and thank you so much for allowing me to talk to you today um, about 13 scary but true uh, spiritual truths uh, that are not for the faint-hearted. And... Um, <clears throat> These truths have come about, and I've discovered these in my own life, uh, over thousands of hours of personal meditation. I've been teaching meditation around the world for over a decade, and uh, I've done, like I say, thousands of hours of personal meditation. And today I want to share with you uh, what I've discovered through my own personal quest so far. And I really believe if you tune in, listen in, you're going to find uh, that these are very, very powerful. But like I say, they are not for the faint-hearted, okay? We're going to go straight in and uh, share some pretty big uh, concepts today, pretty big things that a person may discover uh, on their spiritual journey, on their spiritual path, uh, and or spiritual quest. And I think if you uh, take heed of these, you're going to find them very powerful. Just before I do, I want to say hi to Marion. Hello, Marion, and uh, Roberta, and uh, Suzanne. And uh, who else? Chelsea. Hi, Chelsea. And uh, Scott from Oregon. Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me today uh, for this Facebook Live on the Hay House uh, Daily Meditations page. Real honor to be here uh, with you. So what are these uh, 13 scary but true spiritual truths? Well, before I get started, I want to just, you know, make a point really loud and clear that walking any spiritual path it can take courage. It takes courage. And you must know this uh, from your own first-hand experience. There are certain uh, scary but true uh, spiritual truths that anyone with a deep desire to wake up spiritually in this lifetime will usually encounter uh, along the way. Now, be warned. These truths are, are not for the faint-hearted, and they're not for people that are only interested in gathering uh, ego-pleasing conceptual ideas surrounding enlightenment. The ego may want to instantly uh, reject or dismiss uh, some of these uh, spiritual truths, and it may find and give you good reasons in order to do so. These uh, uh, spiritual truths may uh, cause you to have some pretty challenging questions or see some pretty challenging possibilities in your life. But despite that, sing as Halloween, we have to face our fears, we have to step forward and be courageous uh, in our journey. So for those that are serious about spiritual awakening, I've got something really exciting to share with you. So are you up for me sharing with you uh, the first one? We've got 13 to get through. I'll spend longer on some than others. And just so you know, I published a blog on my website today. So if you do end up wanting to um, explore these further, you can hold, head over to my website if you want uh, to read more about it. So the first one is who you think you are doesn't exist. Dum, dum, da. <laughs> who you think you are uh, doesn't exist. This is the first scary but true uh, spiritual truth. You are the permanent, present, underlying self that exists beyond the temporary uh, identities conjured up by the ego mind. You know, most people, uh, before they learn to meditate, they get into this sort of stuff, they're usually having some sort of identity crisis. They, they basically believe 
and think they are someone or something that they actually aren't in reality. They think they are the voice in their head that sounds like them. And in doing so, identify way too strongly in that voice in their head that sounds like them uh, to an unhealthy degree when it comes to deciding what they're capable of, how lovable they are, or, or who they are. They think they are their emotions. They think they are their body. They think they are their career. They think they're their relationships. Um, they think they are their religious affiliations or whatever. Now, although the, all these things are a wonderful part of being human, ultimately, they're not who you are. Why? Because they're temporary and they can change. And the person, and, the, and, and should I say, the self that you really are, the self that you really are, is beyond anything that can change. It's beyond anything that comes and goes. It is a permanent, present, underlying uh, self that is present even if your career changes, even if uh, the voice in your head changes its opinion, even if uh, your religious affiliations change, even if any of these things change, that often people think they are that thing. I am an architect. I am a best-selling author. I am a, or whatever. I am a wife. I'm a husband. I'm a daughter. I'm a son or whatever. Whatever IDs we can pick up along the way that we use to draw our identity from, the first scary but true spiritual truth that's not for the faint-hearted is who you think you are uh, doesn't exist. Oh, well, we definitely got off to a pretty good start there. Hope you enjoyed that. Do give me some uh, likes along the way. Just so I, I know you're with me. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Lauren says yes uh, with a couple of explanation marks. That's awesome. And uh, Maria is calling from Edmonton. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us today, Maria. And uh, Lauren uh, does a, shares a laugh out loud, which is always nice. So the second uh, scary but true spiritual truth is, and this is a big one, guys, you need to be willing to be nobody. You need to be willing to be nobody. Whew, big one. You see, the ego needs to be somebody. The, ne the ego needs to be important, uh, powerful, uh, gain possessions and prestige and praise. But your real self, the self that is beyond all that, knows, number one, it's nobody. And number two, it's one with everything. So there's one idea of the ego going, I'm nobody and getting all depressed and down and unconfident about that. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about recognizing that during our spiritual path, there's a point where we usually need to be willing to be nobody. We need to be willing to make our peace the most important thing. Our connection to source and life, creation, God, whatever term you like to use, we need to make that the most important thing and dissolve our identity into that. And in doing so, the recognition is that what's left is no individual uh, somebody. In fact, it's nobody. But the good news is that nobody is connected and one with everything. So don't worry, we're going somewhere really beautiful uh, with this spiritual uh, path. So the ego is petrified of not existing. And it will go to great lengths that, to try and uh, convince you that if you let go of the ideas of who you think you are, your demise will quickly follow. This is not true. When you let go of the temporary thoughts, when you let go of the temporary emotions, when you let, stop identifying uh, so strongly in the voice in your head that sounds like you, when you let go of all that, you return to an experience of love and wholeness. Uh, and it's the love and wholeness of your unified real self, the permanent unchanging self. But during the journey, we're usually happy, willing to be nobody. How is that? Do, do you, are these any good for you? Are you enjoying these? Uh, Raven uh, says, that's huge. And uh, Broen says, amen. <laughs> and Pia says, hello from Sweden. Hello there. Um, welcome to this. I hope you're enjoying this. I'm sharing with you 13 uh, scary but true spiritual truths. And the third one is you are not an individual you. You're not an individual you. You are one with source with life. You're one with creation or God, if you are willing to use that term. Don't freak out. I'm not talking about religion here. I'm talking about spirituality and the direct living experience of that source, life, 
creation, uh, God. When you know and experience oneness, all your ego-fueled uh, fears, identities, resistances, and attachments can finally start to fall away. You see, separation is a mind-made illusion that stems from believing that you're the voice in your head that sounds like you. <laughs> the more you identify in the voice in your head that sounds like you, the more the illusion of a separate self is created. You see, that voice in your head that sounds like you creates a me. Okay, it creates a me. And if there's a me, there's a you. And if there's a me and a you, there's two. If there's a me and a you, there's usually an external life too. And there's, an, a, there's a separation between me and life as well. And so separation uh, quickly follows. But as you continue on your spiritual path, you start to be able to see uh, the voice in your head uh, and the identities it creates is just another thought or a collection of thoughts. You can let them go. You can just see the thoughts and let them go to rest into the permanent, unbounded being that is beyond all of it. There has never been a time and there never will be a time when, when you're not one with everything. How beautiful is that? Even if your mind convinces you that you experience, you're alone and there's loneliness in your experience, that experience is coming from leaving the one self, the oneness of self, uh, creation, life, God, whatever you want to call it, and identifying too strongly in the voice in your head that sounds like you. By withdrawing your attention from the voice in your head that sounds like you and placing it much more on being, atten being attentive to the present moment reality, you can start to be more attentive to the presence of the present moment. And you discover the presence of the present moment is still and silent and calm and peaceful and love and free. It's who you are. It's what you are. And it's impossible for you to ever be separate from what you truly are. The mind can create the impression that you are, but it's impossible for you to actually be, actually in reality, separate from who you really are. Oh, lots of lovely hearts there. That one resonated. Thank you so much, guys. Experiencing oneness leads to this. It leads to compassion, it leads to peace, it leads to freedom. You never fear being alone, and you never have to prove yourself as being better or more clever or wiser or special. You see the word, world with clarity through compassion, compassionate eyes. You see the world. Uh, with clarity through compassionate eyes. And compassion is a combination of love and wisdom. And you discover that the ultimate love affair in life is oneness with the still silent presence of your unified self. Well, I hope you're enjoying this uh, so far. I'm sharing the 13 scary but true spiritual truths. And like I said at the beginning, be warned, uh, the ego might want to uh, reject some of these. Um, but if you listen beyond that to what the experience I'm trying to share with you today, you might just be able to feel that there is some truth in what I'm saying. Even if it just you feel like you're not experiencing it yet, but there's hope that you can get there. There's truth in what's being shared today. So we've sh the first three uh, are you're not, uh, sorry, who you think you are doesn't exist. You need to be willing to be nobody and you're not an individual you. Number four on the scary but true spiritual truths, is you have no past or future. You have no past or future. On a spiritual quest, and as we awaken, it's usually very common for us to recognize and that there is ultimately no past and future. That the past and future is ultimately no more than a collection of thoughts that are occurring in the ego-based thinking uh, mind. In order to wake up, it's really useful and important to stop defining ourselves by our past and stop relying on the future uh, for hope. Because waking up involves living with an undivided uh, awareness of the reality of now. You see, the holy grail of uh, sp almost every spiritual quest is to learn how to be here and now. So much so, I would say that any true spiritual teaching has learning to be present at its uh, core and at its heart. This is because 
part of waking up is going beyond the illusions of the mind. And one of the illusions of the mind is time. This is the only moment that exists. And the only way to access your past right now is to leave the moment and go into your mind and imagination. The only way to go into your future is to leave the moment and go into your mind uh, through your uh, thoughts and, like I said, uh, imagination. Now, obviously, there's day and night and the passage of time and uh, it, time is useful to, in order to catch a movie or meet up with friends, but there's ultimately no such thing as 9 a.m. The past is the collection of uh, memory-based thoughts and the future is a collection of fictitious fantasies. I talk a lot about this in the time chapter of my Calm Cure book. So if you're interested in what I'm sharing with you today, um, do check out uh, my Calm Cure book published by the wonderful Hay House. When you recognize there's ultimately no such thing as a past or future, and that now is the only moment that exists, something magical happens. You stop having to give so much attention to the thoughts that happen in your mind about the past and future. When you know that the past and future isn't as real as the reality of now, and you make it a priority, and it becomes your passion to be fully focused on what is happening here and now, naturally the past and future stop being able to have any power over you to make you sad or scared or anxious or whatever. We bring our attention right back to the only moment that exists, the only, moment that, the only moment that you exist, the only moment you can experience peace and happiness and love and joy and contentment, recognizing that you have no past or future is one of the scary but true spiritual truths that most people encounter along their way uh, during any uh, genuine and true spiritual quest. How are you doing, guys? I'm just going to check in with you. got a few comments like, so true, wow, yes. Um, not an easy concept. I agree with you, but that's what today's theme is all about, sharing some scary but true spiritual truths that are not for the faint-hearted. Um, what else we got coming in? Um, Hello from Florida, Susan says. I am that I am, Suzanne says. Wonderful. Hello from South Africa, Anton. Hello there. Um, whenever it's warmer where you are. I'm currently tuning in and calling in today from my home in Spain. Uh, and it's pretty chilly today. I live up a, a mountain and uh, it's uh, pretty cold here. So I've got my, my warm jacket on and I've got my uh, cuppa of, and, uh, with my Day of the Dead uh, coffee cup. I know that I'm having coffee in it today, but um, I thought, you know, this might have a, it's saying it's Halloween and the Day of Dead on Thursday, I think it is. Uh, thank you for joining me today for this. Um, loads of really cool uh, comments coming in. Thank you so much, guys. Lots of lovely comments, uh, great concepts. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome, awesome. And Susan says, hi from Scotland. Fellow Scott, hello there. Okay, let me move on to the fifth scary but true spiritual truth and this is a big one guys and it is it doesn't matter how you feel it doesn't matter how you feel and I appreciate this is a big one um, but only your ego mind cares about how you feel your awake self doesn't care about any temporary feelings passing through why because it knows itself as a permanent presence of peace wow only your ego mind cares about how you feel. Your awake self uh, doesn't care about any temporary transiting emotions because it knows itself for what it really is, which is a divine, delightful, delicious presence of eternal, ongoing peace. In uh, Calm Cure, I have a whole chapter on emotions. And in there, I talk about how emotions are remnants of the past, shadows of how your mind was made to feel a few moments ago. Whoa. Shad emotions are remnants of the past, shadows of how, of how your mind was made to feel a few moments ago. Well, what, what, do we, what do I mean by that? Well, take a moment to notice that it requires a subtle checking out of the present moment to go into your mind to start, to, to start thinking about how you're feeling, what you're feeling, why you're feeling that way. And as a person continues in their spiritual awakening, they the, their desire to leave the moment diminishes. They just want to stay where reality is happening and where the presence of life and the presence of God, the presence of divinity exists. They want to just stay here, right here, right now. They don't want to go into uh, the past and leave the, the delightful presence of, of now. For you to know that you're anxious or sad, happy or, or scared or whatever, for you to know these things requires some sort of mental activity. 
anytime the mind observes uh, some sort of emotion or notices the emotions going on in the body, it usually asks a couple, couple of questions. It usually says, what am I feeling? How am I feeling this way? And it engages in lots of thoughts and thinking uh, about that. Emotional energy may be within you now, but it's there because of something that's happened in your mind a few moments ago. Now, you might be conscious of these thoughts, you might not be so conscious of them quite yet, but irrespective, how we're feeling is a result of how we're thinking. You're feeling what you're feeling because you're thinking uh, what you're thinking. The more we bring our attention and give it undivided to the present moment, so we don't even leave it to try and check in with how we're feeling and, and start thinking about how we're feeling, the more we have an undivided, higher level attentiveness to the present moment, the less preoccupied, the less concerned or interested we are in, in any temporary emotions uh, passing through. We stop being so fixated on our feelings and don't need to manage and control them as much. In short, we stop having to keep our mind happy all the time. And guys, that is such a huge relief. So much time and effort and money is invested by constantly trying to keep this mind of ours happy uh, all the time. I have a bit of a, a, a theory on, on what enlightened emotional freedom is. And that is where you are so engaged in the reality of now, so uh, in, uh, focused on the, the divine presence that exists right here, right now, when you get beyond your mind into the, the moment fully, you're so filled up by this moment that you no longer care about how your mind feels about the past or future. And when that happens, I believe you're truly emotionally free. So it's a very powerful, um, uh, spiritual, scary but true spiritual truth, uh, this one, that ultimately it doesn't matter how you feel. Now, take it or leave it, depending on where you are uh, in your journey, but just think about the possibilities here. If it didn't matter how you're feeling, oh my God, you'd be free to do whatever, to be whatever. You wouldn't be held back by how you feel. You see, it's often not life that holds us back, but the fear of how life might make us fear, uh, feel that holds us back. Let me say it without fluffing the lines next time. Um, it's not life that holds us back. It's the fear of how life might make us feel that is often what's holding us back. But if we're no longer uh, scared about uh, feeling certain emotions, you know, in Calm Cure, I talk about how to calmly coexist with the full spectrum of emotions. And when you can do that, when you can peacefully, uh, fully experience the full spectrum of uh, emotions uh, without suffering, uh, without stress, without strain, and without any turmoil, I believe you're emotionally free. Okay. Number six, the six of uh, 13, scary but true spiritual truths. Uh, They're not for the faint-hearted on this Halloween uh, day. Uh, how are you doing? Happy Halloween to everyone tuning in. Hope you're enjoying today's uh, Facebook Live with me. Uh, Ali says, this is mind-blowing for me. I worry so much about the future and get depressed about the past. Wow, stay with this. Take this as an invitation. And uh, if you want my support, I'm here for you, my friend. I'm here for you. If you uh, want any more support along your journey, um, you can check out my website for how to get in touch uh, and how to work with me. I have an online community, which is uh, a wonderful way to, to be able to gain this in, in, insight and, in, and get the deep, direct living experience yourself. Number six. Oh, this is a big one as well. Uh, you are not in control. Oh, <laughs> you are not in control. Control is an illusion that stems from the idea that you are an individual that is separate from source, life, creation, and God. Control is an illusion that stems from the idea that you are a separate individual and you are separate from source, life, creation, and God. Now, enlightenment, uh, spiritual awakening, is about recognizing oneness with divinity, oneness with source, oneness with life, oneness with creation. And so, ultimately, if oneness is the truth, ultimately it means that thy will is always happening. Thy will is always happening, despite it appearing uh, to be uh, my will. Let me, let me move on and explore that further. You know, although it can be comforting to think that we have a lot of control, uh, in reality, it might not be the case Ooh, so much. <laughs> I appreciate that saying you're not in control may also fly in the face of quite a few self-help books, I apologize, um, that are saying take control of your destiny. And there's a, degree, there's, there's a way you can do that, but I'm talking about a spiritual 
airway, you can do that. Before you freak out at the thought of having a control and before you think, oh my God, what, trying to go and control something else, just take a moment to consider with me how much easier and enjoyable life might be if we could stop being such control freaks. Most people invest a huge amount of time, energy, and money in trying to control their thoughts, control their emotions, control their physical body, control their external world, um, control their career, control their money, control the, you know, relationships, dot, dot, dot. It goes on and on and on. But I'd like you to consider how has that control strategy worked for you? How has that control strategy worked for you? Has controlling everything made you relaxed? Has it helped you experience a, a relaxing life? Um, has it taken you to a place of complete peace? Uh, does it make you truly happy? Are you free? You know, what if there's an, an intelligence that you are already one with, which is far more intelligent than their individual uh, thinking mind? What if that intelligence is working through you already? What if there's an immensely uh, powerful and infinitely creative intelligence that has got your back and that is tirelessly working behind the scenes to, uh, to create all that is happening? What if all of your attempts to control everything is actually preventing you from uh, easily allowing in uh, the life, a life that is beyond what you could dream is possible? It kind of boils down to a simple case of my will or thy will uh, kind of type scenario. When you let go of, the, of you being a separate me, then you experience oneness with source, with life, with creation. You experience oneness. And from that space, that space of infinite potential and that space of infinite grace, you can see that life is unfolding. And your main job is to notice, appreciate, and enjoy creation in all of its weird and wonderful guises. Now, I know this is a big one, and take this step when you feel comfortable at that, when that part of, when you get to that part of your uh, spiritual journey. It is much easier to, to do this step when you have uh, discovered the inner presence of peace, the inner presence of stillness, the inner, uh, the source, um, life, creation. God, dare I say that word, because it freaks so many people out. But the, the divinity, it's so much easier to recognize this truth uh, when um, we have that safe haven of inner uh, calm to fall back on. But what I've found in my own life is that the more I'm willing to relinquish uh, control and uh, stop trying to force my will and everything, the much happier I am, the much more at peace I am. And the much more magical uh, life becomes, the much more uh, adventurous uh, life becomes. It doesn't mean that I don't take action and I don't uh, move towards what it is that I want, but I do my best to be surrendered along uh, the journey, which takes us to uh, scary but true spiritual truth number seven, which is you need to surrender everything. And what I mean by that is you need to at least be willing to let go of all your thoughts, your, your feelings, your actions, your circumstances to fully discover the permanently present underlying self and underlying reality. You know, learning to let go is an absolute must and surrender again is at the heart of any true a spiritual path. Learning to let go is key for meditation, it's key for being calm, it's key for being health, ha happy, it's key for being healthy and well, and it's key, key for being spiritually uh, free. In being willing to let go of our temporary thoughts, temporary emotions, tempor temporary circumstances, we're able to discover what permanently remains. In being willing to let go of what's temporary, we get to discover what permanently remains. And also be by, by being willing to let go of our ideas of how our mind, how our emotions, how our body, how our life should be, by letting go of all our ideas about how things should be, we get to uh, embrace the love and grace that is continually flowing through every uh, moment of existence. So really surrender is the secret to 
inner stillness and surrender is the secret to true success in life, in, in my uh, opinion and experience. When you let go of what you're not and you rest into the reality and your real self, you discover that you, you are living a truly successful life because I believe a truly successful life is one that is loved by the person living it. A truly successful life is one that is loved. And when you let go of the judgmental thoughts and the resistances and the attachments and the past and the future and you bring yourself back uh, to, the, to the reality of, of what's being presented right now and you become intimate with the presence of the present moment, you discover the presence of the present moment is love. It's an all-embracing, all-encompassing, unconditional uh, presence of uh, love. And it's, uh, it's, it's, like I said before, it's the ultimate love affair. How are you guys getting on, guys? I'm about to move on to number eight, which is a real fun one. Uh, today, if you're just tuning in, hi, my name is Sandy. I'm the best-selling author, a uh, hey house author of uh, Mind Calm, Body Calm, most recently Calm Cure. If you're liking this, please do go out and get a copy of this book. Uh, I put a lot of love into this book, and a lot of what I'm sharing today is shared in this book. There's a whole chapter on relationships, a whole chapter on health, a whole chapter on um, emotions and uh, a lot of great insights in calm here so do check it out thank you so much who do we have with us we've got uh lore from canada hello um we've got uh, christine christine christan saying that's awesome uh, maya saying so true uh, ashley saying exactly uh, uh raven saying this is just what i need to hear today thank you so much you're so welcome uh, Andrea says, amazing. Hello from Dallas. Uh, Barbara from Northern Germany. Hello there. Um, happy Halloween, uh, Ashley says. Thank you very much. Uh, glad to have found you. This is great. Oh, thanks so much, Kristen. I love this. Thank you, Susan says. So many lovely comments. Please do leave a comment. Please do give some love um, so that other people know to watch this. So if you're watching this, click, click. Uh, a big heart or a like, please, <laughs> so that other people know uh, to give this a watch. Lots of value in this. So moving on with the 13 scary but true spiritual truths that are not for the faint hearted. Uh, number eight is your life may not go to your plan. Your life may not go to your plan. Oh, this is a big one again. You need to be willing to let source, life, creation, God, or whatever you want to call it, which you are one with, by the way, to take you to places you don't think you want to go. Guys, I'm living up a mountain in Spain because this is near my spiritual teacher. This is where my meditation uh, center is. This is, uh, you know, I had an idea growing up that I'd be in a flash pad uh, in central London doing fancy consulting work, all that sort of stuff. But I find myself uh, up a mountain uh, living beside a meditation center. But that is where my heart has taken me. That is where life has taken me. When I've let go of what I think my life should look like, I've been taken to exactly where I need to be. And since being here, I've been so much happier, more connected, more love. And my growth has uh, been exponential. And I just want to share with you, like from my first hand living experience, the importance of this um, truth. It's linked with you are not in control and you, you need to surrender everything, the, the ones that a couple of truths I've already shared. Um, and you need to be willing for life to take you in directions that are outside your, the, the, the parameters of what your mind may have mapped out. You may, think, you may think you want to have a house, a partner, two kids and a dog and end up with none of it. Sometimes you will, but you may end up with none of it. You, may want, you might have an idea of where you want to live or a particular... Uh, the amount of money that you, should, you need to have in the bank for you to feel uh, good or whatever. And again, sometimes these things might not materialize uh, as quickly as you may hope. You need to be willing for any and all life event eventualities to happen. Now, if this sounds unappealing, I need to pose a very important question. What do you want? Do you want to get what you think will make you happy or do you want to be happy? Do you want to get what you think will make you happy or do you want to be uh, happy? I'm not saying you can't want, I'm not saying you can't have any of these things and you can't work towards them. I'm, you can still make plans. To be spiritually free though, you need to be willing for life not to go to your plan all the time. When you, when you relinquish control and you open up to the unexpected, life becomes one big adventure and you experience true abundance. 
the key here is to want whatever you want, but not be attached to getting it. Okay. Now, the way to do that is to make it a priority to be present. Because when you fill your attention up with now, there's no sense of any lacking. And uh, life uh, immediately uh, becomes abundant. So the key is to be fully present. The key is not to be attached uh, to your plan happening. And when this happens, then anything that happens actually becomes a bonus. And you can't help but align with and fulfill the purpose for which you were born. Okay, so when you're willing to let go of your plan, guess what? The, a much bigger plan can present itself for you and you actually um, can't help but fulfill the purpose for which you were born, which is pretty marvelous if you uh, don't think about it. <laughs> you can think about it if you want. Okay. Lots of amazing comments. I'm excited to read your book, Julia says. I'm excited for you to read my book too. Please do go out and grab a copy of Calm Cure. Um, it's, I've put a lot of love into this. It's my 11th book that I wrote. And uh, I think I've got better and better with every book. So um, do give this uh, Calm Cure a, a, a good read. And tell your friends. Um, it is available on Kindle, thank you very much. And I recorded it as well. So if you like uh, a Scottish accent, uh, then uh, you can actually listen to the audio version as well. You can, uh, all available on Amazon and all the other, other places. Okay, number nine. Um, the ninth uh, scary but true spiritual truth is there are no external signs of enlightenment. There are no external signs of enlightenment. This is a really important one. Uh, there's no rule book for what an enlightenment person should look like or how they actually act. Evidence of awakening is all about the inner experience of oneness with self. It's common for us to pick up a vast array of ideas about what enlightenment uh, should look like. Accidentally, we can end up trying to live up to these ideas or end up judging others if they don't appear to be conscious or enlightened. We think to ourselves or... Uh, that person can't be conscious because they aren't a vegan or they don't do yoga or they don't have enough crystals lying around or, what, or whatever. That person can't be conscious because they don't look calm. That guy that's talking, written cat books about calm isn't very calm right now. He can't be very conscious or whatever. Um, that person doesn't look very conscious because he drives a flash car. We can create loads of ideas about what enlightenment uh, looks like. And we can create a lot of ideas about what enlightenment feels like inside ourselves. Enlightenment is not a feeling. Feelings are temporary, but enlightenment and awakening is going beyond uh, temporary thoughts, temporary emotions, temporary identifications, temporary uh, phys physicality. We're going beyond that temporary to experience the permanent unchanging. And so it's really useful for us to let go of our, our ideas of what uh, enlightenment uh, looks like, um, because ultimately it's about the inner exploration of knowing uh, thyself. When you do this, we stop distracting ourselves with external fluff and, and free our time and attention to, to really work on, what's matter, work on what matters, which is the inner experience of oneness with source, life, creation, God, whatever you want to call it. Is that useful? Hopefully, some of you can take a big weight off your shoulders and stop trying to be like a particular way and, re and just make all your focus about the inner experience, your whole uh, experience of waking up can be much more enjoyable and liberating uh, if you recognize there's ultimately no external signs uh, of enlightenment. Number 10, we're getting to the end. I hope you've enjoyed today. Number 10, uh, as my battery starts to run down, let me just see if I can plug this in. Oh, cool. That was a good catch. Uh, <laughs> number 10, some people may not get you. Along your journey, you may find that some people may not, just not get you. You may press some people's buttons and may judge you when you step outside the societal status quo or their ideas of what's spiritual. You know, I, I want to read a little bit from my blog uh, that I shared with you. It's on my website. I don't know if you can see that, but um, I'm reading from my blog today a little bit here and there uh, as a reminder. Um, head over to my website, sandynewbeginning.com. Uh, accessible via my Facebook uh, page and um, to, to be able to click through to my website to read this whole blog if you want. Um, but I want to read a, a couple lines from it. It says, truth isn't always popular. 
isn't uh, um, all often uh, uh, much interest to the mainstream yet and can press some people's buttons, making them uncomfortable, causing them to sometimes project out with negativity. Misery loves misery. Like attracts like. And happy people tend to piss off those who are dwelling on what's wrong. I get it. It's hard to hear about peace, perfection and heaven if you're anxious, judging everything and living one hell of a life as a result. So that's a little quote from uh, the blog uh, that I shared uh, today uh, on the 13 Scary But True Spiritual Truths. Do head over to my website to read the full blog and uh, sign up for my newsletter or whatever if you want to keep in touch and receive these into your inbox. But it's, it's about recognizing that, you know, and accepting uh, that some people that you love or you want to be loved by aren't going to want to take your spiritual journey with you. And um, you need to sometimes be really courageous uh, and let that uh, happen. You know, when you start to step towards more peace, more love, more freedom, um, that can press other people's buttons because it highlights to them their compromising uh, choices. Um, you know, some people are just wanting a safe and relatively comfortable life. Um, you know, they're happy with hating their nine to five job. Um, they are, they're willing to have a few weeks vacation every year to get away from it all. Uh, and they want to, you know, stay within uh, societal uh, status quo. But despite this, guys, I urge you, I urge you, I urge you to stay committed uh, to your path and not stop. Even if some relationships stop being what they used to uh, along the way. Love people. You don't need to be hard on anyone. You can, it can be very graceful, um, but recognize that some people may not get you. I say this because a lot of people quit their spiritual quest because they don't want to rock the boat uh, or they want to try and maintain certain relationships. And it doesn't mean you have to, it doesn't mean to say all relationships have to fall away, but just be aware that everyone and everything benefits from your choice to wake up from your choice to know truth, from your choice to be peaceful, to be free, to be calm, to, to experience oneness. Everybody uh, benefits. Um, so stay strong. Stay strong, guys. Are you with me? Stay strong. Uh, and uh, stay committed to your path. Uh, you can't do it on your own is number 11. You can't do it on your own. This is a bit of a dent to the ego, this one. But you really can't do it on your own. It's wise to have a teacher so you don't rely on the ego mind to tell you how you're getting on going beyond the ego mind, okay? Does that make sense? So a huge part of awakening is to go beyond the separate individual, the uh, ego. And um, there's, uh, the ego mind will want to convince you that you can do it on your own and you don't need a spiritual teacher. It'll often tell you that you don't want to give your power away or that the era of the uh, guru is over. Um, to be honest, I, I think that, that uh, you need to be careful with that sort of, of op opinion. I honor what you, how you feel, but um, you need to be careful that it's not your ego telling you that. Um, because I find it's very useful in my own life to have a spiritual teacher to, to, uh, to have guidance from and who's been there, got the t-shirt, um, lived a real and flawed life uh, and is, is living uh, uh, with stillness and peace, oneness and, and connection. And I feel honored to have a spiritual teacher. Um, there's really three ways to wake up in this lifetime. One is to be born awake. Um, if you if that didn't happen, sorry to say you missed the boat. Uh, the second way is to uh, have a spontaneous awakening, uh, which are, believe it or not, more rare than being struck by lightning. Uh, so I wouldn't wait for that one. And the third uh, way is to, um, one of, another way is to find someone who's been there, got the t-shirt and is able to show you how to do it. Uh, personally, I chose a spiritual teacher that um, hadn't spontaneously awakened, hadn't uh, was wasn't born that way, just purely because um, all if someone is, was kind of it just happened to them. How do they tell you how to do it? They, they can only really tell you what it's like from the other side. Um, and so, what I find is really useful to have a, to find uh, a, some sort of uh, external teacher. Um, that is basically because of oneness, because of you being one with everything, they're ultimately just an external manifestation of your desire to be free. Um, so you're not really giving your power away to any person unless, you, if you're doing it, unless you're doing it from the ego, which I wouldn't recommend that you do. So find someone that you trust, find people, a group or whatever that you trust, and, and know that you don't have to do it on your own. Like I said, it can be a dent to the ego to think that you can't do it on your own, but also how wonderful that you don't need to. You know, I have such a great time 
uh, on my spiritual path and uh, I mean, lots of wonderful friends and lots of connection and and uh, geez, I, I go motorcycle riding with my spiritual teacher. Uh, it's a, I, it's a, it, remember, there's no external signs of enlightenment. <laughs> so we have a wonderful uh, time and so it's much more fun to do it with others. So I, I recommend it. Number 12, you can't figure it out. Um, look, you're going to gather loads of really cool spiritual concepts along the way, but you need to be willing to go beyond them to experience uh, truth. So enlightenment or waking up is, is, is yes, you're going to gather advice and knowledge and understanding, but ultimately we need to be willing to surrender that uh, and come back to the direct living experience of, of, of reality, uh, be, which is beyond a concept or thinking about life. It's the direct relationship and oneness with life itself. And finally, uh, the 13th scary but true spiritual truth that are not for the faint-hearted is your spiritual path has no end. Your spiritual path has no end. Um, source, life, creation, God, whatever, whatever you want to call it, uh, is infinite. There is always more peace, more love, more joy to be experienced. And so your exploration of the self is endless. So be wary of anybody who tells you that they are enlightened. Um, how would they know, really? Uh, just explore that. Uh, be careful with that one. Um, it's, it can be sometimes a mind concept going, yes, I've arrived. I'm enlightened. <laughs> so just be careful with that one. But the good news is you don't have to worry about trying to get there. You know, the mind wants to put your enlightenment and your awakening into a nice little box with a bowl and go, well, that's that done. Now I get on with my life. But your life is the context of your awakening. The world is the context of your awakening. And um, thank goodness there isn't a destination. Thank goodness you can't ever find the limits of love or the outer parameters of peace. Thank goodness there's always, always uh, more. And so ultimately, um, let go of the idea of having to try and get there and make the focus much more about the here and now and exploring uh, the, the truth uh, of, of reality. The goal, as Mahatma Gandhi uh, said, is to be empty. You know, he uh, said in the end of his life that he had made his greatest impact when he'd reduced himself to zero. And that's really uh, a lot of what I'm sharing today. Reduce yourself to uh, let go of all the temporary to reduce yourself to what's uh, left. And what you discover is what's left is infinite and abundant and full of what you ultimately, ultimately want. When you are experiencing that, you'll discover that and be delighted that there is no end uh, to the spiritual path. And you wake up every day excited to keep exploring. You wake up every day excited to keep exploring. So there's the 13 spiritual, uh, sorry, scary but true spiritual truth. I hope you've enjoyed uh, today's Facebook Live. They are who you think you are doesn't exist. You need to be willing to be nobody. Uh, you are not an individual you. You have no past or future. It doesn't matter how you feel. You aren't in control. You need to surrender everything. Your life may not go to your plan. There's no extra signs of enlightenment. Some people may not get you. You can't do it on your own. You can't figure it out. And the spiritual path never uh, uh, ends. How was that? Did you enjoy that? Like I said, if you want to find out more about this, head over to my website uh, where you can read the full blog. Um, if you want to meet me in person, I'm doing a couple uh, events in the UK uh, to, end off, to round off the year, so check that out. Um, do please uh, check out uh, the Calm Cure book uh, because I'm really proud of it. It's the unexpected way to improve your health, your life, and your world. And I think you find if you've enjoyed today, you'll really uh, love uh, this uh, book. And I'm just going to go through some of the comments to say goodbye to everyone. Um, thank you so much for sharing. I'm going to listen to the rest of your uh, live commentary later. Check out your blog. Thank you very much, Shona. Um, some people change and no longer the same spiritual vibration. That's very true. Um, it's a really personal journey, but teachers lead the way. Awesome. Uh, your spiritual path has no end. Someone's explanation mark. The ability to learn and grow never ends. Hallelujah, Nikki says. I sit back and enjoy the ride, and he says. Uh, life is a never-ending journey of learning and awakening. Uh, is this video available after the show to friends? Uh, yes. Um, it is. Just head over. Uh, You'll be able to share it from the uh, Hay House Daily Meditations page and watch the recording. Thank you so much. Um, 
Lots of thank yous coming in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really, truly enjoyed. Thank you, Sandy. You're very welcome, Diane. Uh, love and light and blessings to you. You too, Margaret. I enjoyed this. Thank you. Uh, Maria missed the beginning. Well, once it uh, finishes, you can go back and listen to it. I appreciate this. You're so big. So many. There were some big ahas there I needed to hear. You're very welcome, Lisa. Uh, so many thank yous and lovely comments coming in. Guys, you're wonderful. I hope this isn't the last time, the last time I get to talk to you um, on uh, the Hayes Hay House um, daily meditations page. I really enjoyed this opportunity. I want to thank Hay House for the opportunity. It's a wonderful uh, way to share and it's a real joy uh, to do so. I hope to uh, see some of you guys over at my, my website after this. Uh, remember to check out uh, the book and enjoy the rest of your Halloween. Until then, until, I, until we next speak, should I say, uh, I wish you infinite peace and limitless love and bye for now. Bye, guys. <laughs>